multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So New Off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting with uh, Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here. But I just want to see how Hall Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car really. Yeah, they're taking their pissed up strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the out pedal, and Approaches dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down it towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Varani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is a Pike's pushed more and forward up ahead. He's got out of line. Is now Pike could have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like trouble. He's left on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Yeah, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's allowed to have fun. Yeah. It's all I'm about the entertainment, so I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at being enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now?
Does he have it? Oh, they're going to toss it! Oh, they're going to it! He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work! Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look how much Miller's caught back into play! Exactly! Miller's just like Chopper. He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play! Can Barry do it? Can Barry's going to do it! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and we are back with the UK Sim Races MX5 live from VIR Full Course. This is round five. I am Chase Bravo. I'm going to be joined in the booth by Mr. Edward Hunter this evening. There's nothing to report on last week. We did not happen last week at all due to the wonderful world of the iRacing updates that kicked in, and unfortunately... That was it. Game over. Did not come back on till, bef well, I think it was got nine o'clock at some point there as well. Track left this evening from the VIR full course, 5.22 kilometers in length. Now, we can bring you up the scores on the doors at this moment in time. Tom Griffiths is out in front on 477 with Pete Newman on 440. Miles Owens on 416 with Pete Van Gaal on 414. Jamie Ayres in fifth on 4.11. Ralph Cullinan in sixth on 3.55. Then you've got Dan Hunt on 3.29. Steve Evan on 3.22. Arnold Chandonier in ninth for Colin Sampson, 10th. Dal Wright, Martin Sampson, Jamie Wilson, Dan Dennison, Callum McPherson, Fiona Siddons, Andy Littler, and Charles Kellerman. Then you've got Mick Barry, Steve Hansford, Alan Toon, Craig Jones, and Darren McLean in the team standings at the moment. It is Momo out in in front with zero points apparently um so that's nice can we try that one again please uh many thank you very much is there we go momo's that in point in front on 3293 with results clothing on 2561 sim race sweden esports on 2151 will work out by result on 1819 pure sims on 1292 year one dof reality air smart racing safeguard by result after that no points on the grant board for the teams below that as well welcome in summer farmer states which is our very own fiona siddon she's here in this championship this evening and daryl wright good evening it's international viewer from cyprus well daryl hope you bring me back something rather nice or at least a postcard and be nice to the wife she definitely doesn't want to be clipping you around the hero in cyprus dear sir i can tell you that much but you've listened to me waffle on we're coming to the end of practice before we go into qualifying let's bring ed into the booth good evening dear sir how are you Oh, very good, thanks. I think the Beatles said it, uh, to paraphrase the Beatles very, very badly, uh, you don't know how lucky you are to be back in VIR. So great circuit, MX-5's fabulous cars to watch uh, put through their paces here. Uh, many great over overtaking opportunities. Horseshoe obviously stands out, Oak Tree is another one, and the sort of back straight leading into roller coaster as well, turn, turn 14 essentially, that could be another good opportunity as well but uh, yeah sprint races so it's going to be fast it's going to be furious and lots of mixed up grids uh, in the later races yeah for 15 minute heats of course we've got the top 11 invert for race two we will tell you what it is for race three between race three and four for race four especially a little bit later on when we change sessions of course between race two and race three but it's all going to be going off here as well and with these guys are just starting out and qualifying they've got a bit of a long run here with lap times round about the 207 to 210 mark there are the slower people here who are a little bit slower unfortunately mr jones is a little bit off the pace round about the four second mark i'm sure he'll get hopefully get a little bit better as he goes on throughout the evening i'm sure but yeah great action should be taking place here as well and um, one that i'm really looking forward to vir is a tough course right you, you've got lots of different sections on it you've got lots of uh, you know fast flowing corners of you come off through the snake and then you go seven eight nine ten you've got the oak tree of course no more oak trees there unfortunately for that one struck by lightning removed for safety reasons i race and then took it out of the game. And of course, you got the horseshoe. So lots of opportunity for people to get past and make overtakes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so many fast flowing sections. Uh, always love the uh, 
sort of uh, snake bends from sort of five all the way through to uh, south bend, turn 10, just leading up to that oak tree hairpin, because uh, that really is just a lovely section to watch uh, at high speed in a in a Mazda MX-5, of course, or, or any car to, for, for that matter, but the MX-5s is what we're seeing today as we see Craig Jones just negotiate oak tree, of course. Very easy to spin if you get uh, too early on the power there or too wide over the curves onto the grass even. So uh, these drivers in qualifying, this is where we might see a couple of mistakes creep in as everyone tries to just absolutely push the limit, try and get that car as high up the grid as they can, of course. And uh, with the championship, the points still racking up. It's so crucial for those uh, at the top to qualify well here so they're not under threat from those behind in the points. Absolutely. That's one of the things they've got to be looking out for here. Is it going to be as important at this circuit with qualifying? Possibly not. But I think going forward, they, these guys have still got to be aware that it is something they've got to try and get through. Dan Hunt comes over the line here. It's Time's coming in on the board on the left-hand side. Steve Hepper, Tom Griffiths, Pete Van Gogh, Colin Sampson, Ralph Cullen and Pete Newman, Jamie Wilson, Fiona Siddons. So you will see multiple times, I'm sure, as it goes through here. The cars itself, little MX-5s, not the most powerful. Hence the lap times of round, you know, 207s, 208s, 213s, whatever at the moment as well. So, you know, they've got to be aware that they've got to use the opportunity when they can. Exactly. They're, they're very nimble, so they're pretty uh, handy through the corner, so you can get that back end turn quite quickly in the MX-5. Uh, but like I said, they, they, they can bite the unprepared, essentially, especially if you've not got a good setup on the MX-5. It can be quite a... Uh, can be quite a handful but yeah so like you say not the fastest down the straights but of course this isn't a multi-class championship so it's the same for everyone in the mx5 they've got to figure out the best way to get the lap time out of this car as we look is that uh car number seven which is dan hunt of course who's gone fastest at the moment two minutes 13.7 just putting the car for its paces for oak tree yeah, you see Daryl Wright. Husband and abuse is still offence and and hold an extreme sentence so she is on her best behaviour. I can see her coming without VR on, so that's always good. <laughs> well done, Daryl. Glad you can see her coming this time, mate, rather than getting a clip round your own and not wondering where the hell it's actually come from. So, um, yeah, well done to you. How long are you in Cyprus for, sir? And I hope you're having a wonderful time out there, of course, um, enjoying it. I hope it's warm for you. We've got Pete Van Gogh on some purples at the moment. He's coming through 16 and 17 through the hog pen. He'll have the right hander onto the start finish shape before he then gets on his way here with the 10 minutes remaining. So I think this could be PVG taking this top, spe this top step here. Three purples on the board. Two greens. Is he going to get another purple? He's going to go over the line on a yellow. Where's that going to put him? Oh, goes on to top. 207.046 there from Pete Van Gogh. Absolutely stellar lap. Yep, and uh, Miles Owens comes across just behind him and sets the lap only a nine hundredths of a second slower there. So fine margins between the pair. Pete Van Gogh very, very quick in the first sector. And uh, then they're all, they're all setting fairly similar lap times in the middle sector. But uh, Miles Owens just slightly slower in both of them. Yeah, I'm sure Miles will start coming on. He does love his MX-5s. We did see him over the weekend, of course, in the FDR um, Production Car Cup, um, which was quite manic, to be honest. But definitely go check it out. It's worth a definite look here. He was uh, fourth in class there, wasn't he? He was, yeah, yeah fourth in class. He got it, he got it wrong about two laps from the end, if I remember correctly. Um, and then lost third, because he was in a podium at one point, I believe, as well, wasn't he? I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he spun out at turn one. Uh, yeah. Yes. and then kept going and fought his way back up to fourth. So, yeah, it was, it was a lost podium opportunity, maybe, but still he did impress a lot of people, I think, with his pace. Absolutely. So see that transferring here, of course. Oh, as we see, actually, <laughs> right on board with him, and he goes a little bit deep and gets very crossed up coming out of Oak Tree there, and that really shows you how difficult that corner can be because uh, you just go in a little bit too hot, it leaves you with so much work to do, and it really hurts your exit. Yeah, it's just momentum based. They've got to carry the momentum through. And if he doesn't exactly. carry that, that's what's going to cause the problem for him. So he's got to make sure that he's carrying that momentum and trying to get through as best he can as he's now going past a few people on the outside. Tom Griffiths is in front of him in that famous blue-white machine there for Tom. 
as he's got a green, purple, and three greens. Newman's in front of these guys. He's going to be the first one over the line. This should be an improvement on his time. But where is that going to put Tom Griffiths? Not long after that. They're on the run down to the start finish line now over he goes what is Pete Newman going to do on that one how long is he going to be there for he's not going to be there he moved up into sixth place Tom Griffiths moves himself up into third but nobody at the moment can get near PVG with that 207 yeah, but getting the, the fast lap in early, that can be a good strategy. As you see Charles Kellyman get up to eighth, and Steve Hansford sets a time good enough for ninth, just seven tenths behind him. And now Martin Sampson goes sick fastest as well. Uh, often you see with qualifying, uh, they turn on a private session so uh, the, nobody can get in any of it, anybody's way, essentially. But they don't do it here, obviously. So we've got a grid of uh, 16, 17 cars all trying to compete for space on what, to be fair, is a pretty long lap as far as Ooh. MX-5s are concerned, uh, just a little over two minutes. So uh, th th sometimes you are going to see a few people, especially towards the end of the session, uh, when they're looking to start their laps, maybe potentially slowing down in the final sector and holding each other up. Uh, so space could be at a premium uh, when we go into the final couple of minutes. But uh, at the moment, everyone being well behaved and letting each other by down the straights. Yeah, definitely there as well. They're all right. I will be back next week for you encourage it missing right to assault. We did not encourage Mrs. Right to assault you, dear sir. Please. I want nothing to do with this. The, the, you, the, you don't really <laughs> I don't want to get... get this is something that's been going for a while there. I can't even remember how it started. I think Daryl caused a little bit of a pile-up and... Mrs. Wright went in and clipped him around the ear roll for cause of the pileup. So, I, you know, I think, whoa, hello, Miles Owens. I think that's how it all started. And that's how Daryl Wright's ended up on this I've been assaulted path. That's all. It, it was all a little bit of a uh, little bit of banter. And then, it, um, you know, by the seems of it escalated in the right household. Um, <laughs> Technically, uh, it wasn't our fault. holiday still going well, though. Yeah. Sounds like it is. Yeah, go for a drink at the bar, Daryl. Settle down. You know, go for a midnight stroll along the seafront or something. And, um, you know, I'm sure it will be all good. in the background as you do so. And look at that lap by Miles Owens as he crossed the line. You'd said he was speeding through there uh, past another driver. And it's good that he did because that lap was good enough to get him... Uh, 0.13 ahead of Pete Van Gogh and onto provisional pole position. So Miles Owens flying out there. Yeah, Miles goes into pole with a 206.919. Pete Van Gogh on a 207.046. Tom Griffiths, 207.200. So uh, these three not very far apart. Three temps separating the top to three. And if that's what we're looking forward to here, then Ed, it's going to be a gripping evening in the racing. Yep, yeah, and of course, uh, we've got the likes of uh, Dan Hunt, Pete Newman, and a couple of the others uh, that are in the top place in the championship, slightly further back, although Tom Griffiths in third, as you say. So uh, uh, still plenty to play for, but a big opportunity for Miles Owens and Pete Van Gool if they can control things from the front row. But still five minutes of quality left to go. Somebody go come out with a Banzai lap and completely change the picture. Well, we will see. Normally, as it gets on, it all starts settling down a bit due to the fact that, obviously, tyres have started going off. You know, they, they can't go in and get changed the tyres. Once they go into the pits, they have to stay in there. That's why PVG, Colin Sands and McBarry have not come out again. So they have to obviously make aware of what they're using. And, and at the moment, sometimes when they get to a certain point, tyres start going off, right? They've been out there for almost 15 minutes driving around trying to find them extra temp or hundredths or thousandths or whatever they're trying to get. Pete Newman is trying to find a lot more than that. He's using Miles Owens as a little to help him with a bit of draft here. And is working for Pete Newman. Four greens on the board. Is he going to follow Miles Owens up the straight? He is. He's going to pull out. Nope. He's tucked back in. Miles Owens is showing pace here. He's pulling Pete Newman across the line. Newman goes to the shortest possible route. What is Newman going to go on the board? If he goes pole, with oh, he has got pole on a 206.561. Miles oh. Owens has just assisted Pete Newman in getting pole position. And was that uh, willing or completely unwitting there? I think Miles is focusing on himself and Pete Newman 
was playing the long game. Very, very clever there from uh, the 118. Well, we're, um, yeah, not sure. I don't think Miles Owens would willingly pull him along. I think Newman Unless may Unless have... he's expecting payback for, for that later in this session. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but they haven't got long. They've only got one, maybe one more at the most here, these guys. To get this, um, to get these laps in, because they are running out of time, and with the lap times being over two minutes sixes and two minute elevens for some, and Ralph Cullen and all the way down in, on the two minute fifteen, the Irishman's not having a good evening of qualifying at the moment there. But I'm sure he'll come back. He's been strong this season as Ralph, and is doing well in the championship. So I think overall for him. He could be well in a good position by the end of the year. Ralph Cullen is sitting fifth at the moment, so not too far back from the guys in front. Yep, yeah, it could be uh, quite a few cars that Ralph has to pass in this race, though. So he's uh, at least on the first one anyway. And like we said, they're quite short sprints, aren't they? So he's got to hope for some chaos ahead, I think, if he uh, can't find any more time on the board here. But to me, that looks like a man that just can't get a clean lap in at the moment with uh, two minutes left to go. And he's, if anything, being slightly held up by, uh, who's that in front of him? Uh, That's one of the optical yeah, greens. So it's either Charles Kellerman, seven. I believe. Yeah, Charles Kellerman. Yeah, so uh, the Jamaican driver, uh, giving him a little bit of a toe, but uh, Ralph, I think, uh, might be feeling a little bit held up through some of these corners. Yeah. Dan Hump behind there as well as my fire alarm goes off in the background. I hope everything's all right and the missus ain't burning the house down with a cooking. Um, as Dan Hunt is coming over the line, I'm sure she would have come bundling in through my door if there was any major issues in my house. Where is Dan Hunt going to put himself? He puts himself in third. So a great job from him. Steve Hefford out there, recognisable from the yellow wheels and the yellow roll bar. Off the side of the circuit, not a good run for him with 128 on the clock. Starting to fizzle out a little bit now, Ed. I think they're all getting a little bit tires are worn and nobody's really trying to push for times as much as they can. Ralph's Ooh. just put himself up into 10th. So a great job from him. Craig Jones is there still down in 13th at the moment, taking all the practice he can get, is Greg. Yep, we did hear he was struggling going into this event. Uh, uh, so 13th at the moment, 209.8 was, I think, the last lap he did. He went over the line. So not doing too badly. He's, he's certainly got himself off the back row. But Ralph Cullinan really benefiting from that toe from the back of Charles Kellyman down the straight then. So... I, w I do wonder if some of these drivers sort of perhaps intentionally or unintentionally have been sort of creating a massive hole in the air for them to slipstream each other down at the sort of long flat out sections where you can just go full throttle for quite a long time down. Uh, down of course, like I said, through the snake and then uh, the back straight uh, by Madison Avenue after Oak Tree uh, and even the start front straight as well after Hogpen, uh, turn 17, the final corner. So plenty of places that you can... Uh, you can be strategic, and those are probably going to be the main overtaking spots in the race as well, leading into them as well. Mm. Yeah, I think they are. I think you are right. That run down from Oak Tree all the way down into four teams is going to provide some overtaking that we we want to see, but not really quite sure if we do. And hopefully it all works itself out and becomes very, very clean. But let's bring you up the grid for race number one. Pete Newman is on pole with Miles Owens in second. Then Dan Hunt third. Pete Van Gaal in fourth. Tom Griffiths in fifth. Jamie Wilson sixth. Martin Sampson seventh. Colin Sansom in eighth. Steve Edford ninth. Ralph Cullen in tenth. Andy Littler eleventh. from Fiona Siddons is down in 12th. Then you've got Craig Jones, Charles Kellerman, Mick Barry, Steve Hansford, and Sir Alan Toon rounded out the back end of the grid. Expect these guys to get onto the grid fairly swiftly as we're going to get heat number one over and done with because it will quite be probably going quite quick here on these lap times, you'd think as well, but the racing is so close and so tight that the time just absolutely flies by. So let's see, we're going to get the lights on now. One, two, 
three, four, five. And we are green, green, green there. Pete Newman getting away. At the beginning, there's still a run down, though. Down into turn one. Anything can change. Newman on the left. Miles Owens on the right. Dan Hunt in third. Pete Newman, Tom Griffiths all in there as well. Jamie Wilson settling in there as he's coming around the outside of turn one. But it is Pete oh, Newman with the whole shot. I Miles is off track. Oh, Miles Owens running wide. Was there contact? That's going to be the problem. And was it all? I think he was just went too own? long on the brake pedal here. Look, he's trying to go around the outside of Pete Newman. He's sort of a little bit offline. Yeah, just understeers. And then he's just the rear end is going and he's on the grass. Yeah, unfortunately for him, Dan Hunt is under attack from PVG. Pete Newman's there through the snake for the first time, straightening up as much as you can physically can. Here yeah. and Pete Van Gaal up one, most of the field up one. Miles Owens down 13 places, though. Unfortunately for him, not the greatest start for him. No, but if you look in the background, he's already making a move on Steve Hansford. 14th position is we see Wilson dispatch Tom Griffiths for fourth place there. It's a good move by uh, Jamie Wilson, but he's going to have to be he's going to be on the outside going into Oak Tree here. Yeah, he's going to have to try. Is it going to work out? Jamie Wilson's trying to go around oh. the outside. Somebody else is off. Colin Sansom and Martin Sampson. Uh, the Sansom and Sampson's about a bit of a moment, I think, as well. As Martin Sampson's car looks absolutely beat up there. So there's all sorts oh. of contact. Heffern's on the inside. He gets into Wilson. Wilson gets into Sanson. And he unfortunately goes round there as well. So Martin Sampson, Colin Sanson, both of them off the side of the circuit. But Dan Hunt with PVG battling away round now as well. Through up through the roller coaster they go. Through 15, down through 16. It's coming thick and fast here as they're going to start going round for lap two. Yeah, PVG, this looks really fired up right now. He was having a little go into 14, wasn't he? Through the roller coaster section. Uh, and uh, Dan Hunt had to sort of just hold firm there. But now Tom Griffiths, he's got a good run because uh, PVG got held up there. So Tom Griffiths is uh, going to try and go around the outside. But Pete Newman is under attack from Hunt, uh, Hunt for the lead. And Hunt is going to try and go all the way around the outside into the horseshoe. Oh, Steve Evan lay on the brakes. He opened up the door for Jamie Wilson. He went in too late into turn one. Wilson's made his way through. 12, sec 12 minutes on the clock. Now you can see battles further down. Fiona Siddons going off the side of the circuit there. Craig Jones going off. Charles Kellerman in front of him as well. But Fiona Siddons taking a very wide line off the side of the circuit, unfortunately. Steve Hefford now going side by side with Jamie Wilson through the 5A and down through the snake here. Not an ideal line too wide. Definitely got to facilitate this one. Yeah, there we go. Wilson and Hefford going at it. Hammer and Tongs and Ralph Cullinan being drafted in behind as well as they go through the snake then. Oh, so careful as Ralph just does a little bit of gra grass cutting there. But it's just a wall of cars in front of him. And it looks like the 72 of Hefford holds firm in that Momo car there. Yeah, trying to as best he can. Steve Hefford, hold on from Jamie Wilson. He's working hard at the moment. We've got Martin Sampson and Miles Owens in the pits. What? Oh, Owens went off again, unfortunately. What did you do? That's the 57 car on the outside. Is there going to be contact? Transfer. Oh, Owens on the grass. Bang, unfortunately for him. Not a great opening race. He showed all the pace, but they couldn't quite activate it in the race. And here comes Dan Hunt once again, and he forces Pete Newman a little bit wide through roller coaster. Then, so Dan Hunt has now got the lead. Then, on a lap two. Yeah, Dan Hunt goes through on Pete Newman as they drop down through the hog pen here. As they're going off now over the start finish shake. Pete Newman is going to look at coming back at him again. Tom Griffiths is going to try. Pete Van Gaal is also in there. Steve Pfeffer, Jamie Wilson. Any one of these cars can take this victory with 10 minutes remaining. And he's our top three in this race, the top three in the championship as well, if I'm not mistaken, James. Just look at this. Again, they're slipstreaming each other. Again, they go two rows of two wide. And Hunt holds off Newman as Van Gool goes up the inside of Tom Griffiths to immediately try and dispel the point that I was making. Yeah, Tom Griffiths trying to hold on now. Coming down into NASCAR Bend here. With uh, Van Gool's got him. And yep. look at this. Pete Van Gool has made his way through. Well. 
with Wilson trying to come up the inside he's making it as well a little bit of door banging there from Wilson round the right hand and they go off through the snake once more here Ed and these guys are literally just neck and neck yeah and we see the consistency of Ralph Cullinan coming into play once more because he's right behind these two looking to pick up more even more places he's already gained three from where he started to get into seventh and look at Heffer just trying to make sure there's no opening whatsoever for Wilson behind. But we saw with poor Miles Owens, if you get a wheel on the grass, a wheel where you don't want it to be, you can just go flying off into the scenery then as Pete Newman up front desperately tries to retake the lead from Dan Hunt. Yeah, he tries coming in there, Wilson and also Heffer still side by side. Down through the oak tree they go. Neither of these ones are letting up here. It's Wilson's going to surely slot in. He wants that draft. Ralph Cullinan has found himself in seventh place. Great bit of racing from Ralph up three spots at the moment. Charles Kellerman up six. Craig Jones up four. So the man from Gospel looks like, however, somebody has just gone off the side of the circuit or there was a big puff of smoke. I believe that may have been Colin Sanson, Jamie Wilson trying to come through on Steve Hefford through the roller coaster. They go nothing doing this time, but Dan Hunt's surely going to be under attack down that start finish straight again. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it's it's always a tricky one because you go to the inside, you're compromising the racing line as Wilson gets through and it looks like Hefford has hit trouble because Ralph Cullinan has got past him as well. And that battle's continuing on in the background. Then Hefford losing several positions. Yeah, he does. It looks like he's just got it all a little bit wrong. Was there contact? Nope. He was already sideways. There is going to be. Oh just missed Ralph Cullinan and Mr. Wilson and unfortunately for Steve Hefford he finds himself back chasing down Craig Jones who is on the back of Charles Kellerman here from that number 29 machine over the 67 this is for the lead in the arms of course Kellerman's holding it at the moment Cullinan's just in front Kellerman and Cullinan say that one quickly when you've had a few as Dan Hunt still leads away with Newman behind him yeah, exactly. So we got our four leaders, Hunt, Newman, Van Gool, and Griffiths, sort of got it to themselves now with that incident there, which is a, a freed up Wilson and Cullen. And Cullen had to go off track there, didn't he, to avoid Steve Hefford, who is now trying to make his way through the uh, AM leaders, essentially, on his recovery. Uh, as we see uh, Mick Barry pass uh, Sir Allen for a uh, 10th position overall in the race in the AM class. But here's the AM leaders. Craig Jones fancies a run at Charles Kellyman here. Yeah, he's got to try it if he can, Mr. Jones. Is he going to be able to get close enough? He's dropped back a little bit as Tom Griffiths is on the back with PVG, Pete Newman and Dan Hunt running out of Oak Tree down into the roller coaster. This is kind of making a draft train almost here, Ed. It's what kind of what you see in F1 more than you see here. <laughs> I, I suppose so, yeah. So uh, strategically, they've all got to figure out a way to uh, make sure... When that timer runs out and they're on the final lap, they're there to take advantage effectively. So this first phase of the race, it almost doesn't matter too much who leads, although try telling that to Pete Newman, the way he's moving all over the, around the back of Dan Hunt there. But uh, it's really going to be about getting yourself in that best position to take advantage come the final tour. Yeah, he's going to try it. Newman's not going to let up. The question is, where do you want to be with these high draft straights on the back and this long one down from 12 to 13? Do you really want to be in the front going into the final lap? Yeah, exactly. You're just going to be a sitting duck, uh, even defending the inside, especially as we see once more Pete Newman trying to go around the outside of Dan Hunt. That puts him ahead going into the corner. But it's Hunt with the shorter line there as we see uh, Van Gool just keeping a watching brief, keeping Tom Griffiths at bay. The two leaders side by side then as we go towards NASCAR. Yeah, it's Pete Newman that snatched it. Yeah, and Newman just outside. got through. Good move. He's just got through. But again, do you really want to be where he is? That's going to be the question because he's got these long runs. And I'm a bit worried with where he is at the moment because BVG was looking strong. Just made a brief little mistake. That's put him into the clutches of Tom Griffiths. Gap's starting to open up now. It is between the lead one and two. Pete Newman, Dan Hunt. Who's going to get it here? Who's going to take the victory? Well, we're going to find out in the next five minutes. Yeah, and Tom Griffiths crucially just having enough overlap to pull off the move on uh, PVG through the snake there. So Griffiths, if he wants to get in the victory conversation here, needs to up his pace a bit to recatch the back of Hunt and Newman. 
But yeah, this is a uh, really good news for those two because uh, now they've got a little bit of gap to play with. Uh, the gloves are going to start to come off here. Yeah, they're going to try. Going to try it now. Dan Hunt's a fighter. He's not going to give up easily. Tom Griffiths has cleared PBG. He's going after Dan Hunt as well. Got the gap to about teetering on that second mark here. Hunt's going to have a go at Newman. This is what we were talking about. Do you really want to be in that place, Ed, going into that final lap? Uh, I think you are, <laughs> yeah, essentially. You really want to be where Dan Hunt is currently. And to me, the, the, as good as that move around the outside from Pete Newman was, it feels like Dan Hunt is very much playing the long game, as much as he can play a long game in a 15-minute sprint race, essentially. Mm. But, uh, as we look behind, Hefford clears Craig Jones and yep. splits the, uh, am lead, the am leaders of Kellyman and Jones there. So that's good news for there. As we see, this is Siddons trying to make a move on uh, Alan Toon there. And Fiona Siddons gets herself back into 12th position. Yeah, Tom Griffith's closing down on Dan Hunt now. We've got four Actually minutes. Passed Hansford as well. yeah, yeah, four minutes before we get on to the final lap. I think there's going to be one and one more here. And they're yeah, going around the left hand. And Gula catching back up again. Yeah, they're well, closing the, the gap. Hunt. Pete Van Gaal is been closing the gap up with Tom Griffiths. They're using each other well to open up, getting up to these front two. Dan Hunt, Pete Newman, Tom Griffiths, PVG. Could be a four-way fight going into the final lap here, Ed, as we're coming into it now. Three minutes on the clock, three and a half minutes. Should be the final lap this time around. Yeah, Dan Hunt tucks right in to the rear bumper of uh, Pete Newman's MX-5 then as he tries to just get himself into position. Is he just going to lift out the throttle before they reach Oak Tree here? Mm -hmm. As they go through South Bend now, and you can see uh, PVG yeah, starting to struggle as Tom Griffiths, Dan Hunt, and Pete Newman just up their pace now, knowing that the end of the race is nigh. So there could be... This is either going to come down to a slipstream battle or a mistake from one of these four that's going to decide the podium order here. Well... Who do you think is going to come out on top out of the four? I think Dan Hunt. I think Dan Hunt has just looked just that little bit quicker than Pete Newman here. And he's been using a lot of restraint here as he has a little think about pulling out through roller coaster. Here we go. Dan Hunt, it takes the lead off of Pete Newman here. But has he gone too early games? That might be him showing his hand a bit here. Well, we're really going to be close here. I think this should be... The final lap, 2.07. Yeah, it should be the final lap. Oh, this is going to be really, 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 really close. As to whether or not there's going to be one more. Newman's tucked in. I think Barney should be waving. I think he is going to be waving here. He is. There he is on the gantry. It's the final lap. Newman's trying to go around the outside of Dan Hunt. Coming down into turn one now. Into that horseshoe. He's even going to run him around the all the way round. Is he going to keep his foot in though? How, how, where would you make it? It's surely got to be that long straight away at the back. Yeah, into roller coaster. He's going, to do, he's going to try and do exactly what Dan Hunt just did the previous lap. There. As we see Griffiths holding off uh, PVG then through uh, NASCAR and uh, through Horseshoe as well. So uh, PVG making a desperate sort of dive around the outside. And this is actually really delaying Tom Griffiths because he's having to defend rather than attack uh, Pete Newman in front of him. Yeah, but unfortunately Pete Newman, well, he's a wily old fox. He's going to be getting away. He's going to be getting away as best he possibly can. Where is he going to leave himself with Dan Hunt? Oh, look at Dan it, trying to break the toe there. Pete didn't follow. That's the thing. Pete's not crazy. He's not going to follow him unless he has to. Like, he, he's Look at there. PVG he, pushing. Yeah, PVG trying to come through. He's gone through on Griffiths. Griffiths is, well, he's there, unfortunately. Whoa. Griffiths has got it all wrong. So it's now between PVG, Dan and Newman coming into the final lap. The final run down from turn 12 down into 14 from the oak tree down to the roller coaster. Who's it going to be now? Well, 
Take a pick because it's going to be coming out of one of these three. Is Newman going to get him? Newman's pulled out there as well. You can see him in the front. He's pulled out. He's got the side he wants. He's going to be going round now. Dan Hunt tacks back in. Tries to slipstream again. Newman's going to come on. Cut his nose off going into the roller coaster. Now, oh, oh. he's hard on the brakes. Is Newman. He almost led that contact through 15 and 16. It's going to be the run down to the line now. One final place for Dan Hunt. Otherwise, he's just not going to get there. I don't think he's going to be able to. I think one man that might be able to get him, though, is Pete New is um, PVG. It's a long way down. It's not right at the beginning, but I think it's going to be Pete Newman. It is going to be Newman taking the victory in the overall over Dan Hunt, over PVG there as well. Charles Kellerman is going to come along in the AMS, and he's going to take the victory for Charles Kellerman. Craig Jones finding himself second in the arms. Well done to him, young man. As Pete Newman there takes the victory. Then Hunt. Then PVG. And then it's Craig Jones um, followed by Mick Barry. So well done to Mick there. As he comes over the line in front of you right now. But game of cat and mouse. It was a game of chess, wasn't it? They had to make sure one of them was in the right position to get that right. Yeah, it was very tense. I thought Dan was going to try and uh, break super, super late into roller coaster and try and cut off Pete Newman, but wasn't quite able to do so. And you saw him just climbing all over the curves, pushing extremely hard and even climbing all over the back of Newman's rear bumper as well, quite literally. But yeah, the leaders all separated the top three by just under six tenths of a second there. So thrilling, thrilling finish. Yeah, Pete Newman is your winner with Dan on in second, PVG in third, Tom Griffiths in fourth, Jamie Wilson in fifth, Ralph Cullinan in sixth, and Charles Kellerman, Steve Hefford in seventh and eighth. Craig Jones in second in the hours with Mick Barry in third. So well done to Mick there. Fiona Siddons, Sir Alan Toon, Colin Sansom, Steve Hansford, Andy Littler, Miles Owens, and Martin Sampson round out the top 17. So a great race from all of them. Don't forget, top 11 reverse. So Fiona Siddons will be on pole with Mick Barry, Craig Jones, Steve Hefford, and so on on that way. They're just going to go into a brief five-minute warm-up here, guys. We're going to take just a brief minute here, and we will be right back very shortly.
Right, guys, welcome back. We've got about 40 seconds left of the warm up. Uh, Craig Jones, no, you do not get a trophy. Um, <laughs> can't have a trophy for filling, finishing second. Just the fact that you finished a race. So, um, you, you know, you can't have a trophy just for finishing a race. I'm proud of you for finishing, mind you. It's not something you've achieved much this season, but you're definitely not getting a trophy just for finishing a blinking race. I can tell you that much. Right. Top 11 reverse. Newman, Hunt, PVG all coming through the field. They're looking quicker than pretty much most of the field here. How are they going to handle this traffic? Well, uh, let's hope carefully for their sakes. But for Bionu Siddons uh, up front, she'll just be hoping everyone else gets into a whole lot of bother, much like she encountered it admittedly in the early laps of uh, the first race, the first heat, and that she can just take advantage and sort of clear off and build a big enough gap to defend from uh, later in the race. All right, here is the grid for race number two. Fiona Siddons is on pole with Mick Barry in second and Craig Jones in third. Steve Hefford fourth, Charles Kellerman, Ralph Cullen and Jamie Wilson, Tom Griffiths, PVG and Dan Hunt rounds out your top ten. Then you've got Pete Newman, Sir Alan Toon behind that one. Then Colin Sampson, Steve Hansford, Andy Littler, Miles Owens and Martin Sampson at the back end there as well. Fiona Siddons on pole. Big moment. Big moment. Not normally finds herself up here. How is she going to handle that? Well, uh, we'll have to see. Uh, let's hope uh, sh the pressure doesn't cause her to make any big mistakes here. But uh, I imagine Fiona will know she just got to make sure defends the inside into turn one and just doesn't try to do anything stupid uh, if uh, if there's a faster car alongside the likes of Griffiths, Van Gool, Hunt, Newman, then it might be difficult to defend as the light's coming on. Yeah, here we go. Five lights are on now and it's green, green, green for race number two. Verde Siddons there in that pole position takes the whole shot. Mick Barry and Craig Jones coming down together as they're coming into turn one. This is only going to end in one way. If they start going too wide, these two, they do have a tendency to get into each other and it goes all a little bit Pete Tong. Steve Heffern's bullied them out of the way though. He said, no, no, no. I'm going through. I'm setting after Fiona. Craig Jones down two places there as well. Oh! Barry. I did say it generally goes a little bit Pete Tong. Steve Evans off the side of the circuit as well. And that's freed up Fiona Siddons to keep that lead of the race. It has, but unfortunately it's also released uh, Ralph Cullinan, who we know very, very good at staying out of trouble and just lapping consistently. So that would have been Fiona's plan now. So as much as she's got a small, slender, just under half second lead, that's going to disappear quickly uh, once Ralph starts getting into that slipstream and all the action's going to be going on behind as Van Gool is already up to fourth now, ahead of Jamie Wilson. Yeah, oh, Wilson's oh, just that got Wilson it, yeah. getting it all wrong? He's just got it completely beat song. Did Jamie Wilson there coming across the grass. Oh. He's now joined back in almost free wide with the optical green there of Kellerman and oh, Hansford. And now is Ralph Cullinan out in front at the moment as he picks Fiona Siddons here again for Ralph. Can he hold it? That's going to be the question. It'll be all right being up there, but it's another thing holding the lead, especially at this high drive circuit like the VIR. Yeah, as we see Van Gool going side by side with Craig Jones and Van Gool just edges ahead and now he's going to try and do a double move. He's going to try and thread the needle between Jones and Siddons. And there we go. He's going to have the inside for roller coaster then. So Ralph Cullinan, he would have hoped Peter Van Gogh would have been held up a bit longer by Fiona Siddons. But Fiona did her best. It's only third now for the pole sitter. Yeah, Fiona Siddons now sitting in third. Ooh, it's been, in yeah, Pete Newman looks like he's also struggling to break his way through the field here. So for Pete Newman, it's going to be a tough one. But let's see how he gets on. I'm sure he's not impartial to making his way through. So I do expect him to be able to do that and get his way through the field. And there you go. You can see they're almost free the wide. Jones on the outside. Hunt's in the middle. Griffiths is in there as well. Makes his way through. Oh, Newman, four. He's just got four uh, places. Sansom, brilliant move. Yeah. 
all in one move. Pete Newman has just cleared Craig Jones, Dan Hunt, Tom Griffiths, and Colin Sanson. Got it all done. Moved his way now up from fifth play up into fourth. So Sam, uh, Newman now on a absolute flyer. PVG Ralph Cullinan at the front. 12 minutes to go. It's going to be a manic one. Yeah, and look at this. Van Gool already going to pull out to the left as they approach the snake here. Nothing that Ralph Cullinan can do, surely, on the outside. He's surely got to tuck into second and then hope that he can get the slipstream and get revenge on Van Gool. But PVG's pace has been electrifying so far. It's going to be difficult for uh, the Irishman to find a way back through. Yeah, I'm sure. But Ralph ain't going to give up. He's an Irishman. They ain't fueled on blood, I can tell you that much. He's fueled on whatever stout Guinness he can find. There is Ralph Cullinan or a swift little yam sitting on the side of the counter. He's got the constitution, hasn't he, to keep going in this battle. But Fiona Siddons, meanwhile, has got Newman, Hunt, Sansom, Jones, and Griffiths, and Kellyman all for company then. So one mistake, and Fiona Siddons could find herself not just on for the podium, as Newman is got alongside. He's going to try and go all the way around done. the outside into roller coaster here, and he's going to drag Dan Hunt with him as well. Yeah, it's going to get it done. Pete Newman now into third. Dan Hunt goes through. Colin Sampson goes through. Looks like Wilson is still having a little bit of a moment with Hefford, who's still trying to get past Barry, who's having his own little battles here. Craig Jones is in the middle. He's got Tom Griffiths settled in right behind him. He's trying to catch Fiona Siddons and Colin Sampson for the arm fight. The gap up front's opened up to about seven tenths at the moment. Ralph Cullen are not quite giving up, but Pete Newman is closing as Charles Kellerman goes into the pits. Yeah, I did wonder. Kellerman made a really bad start off the line. I wonder if he jumped the start, and this is him serving a drive through penalty for that. Oh, yeah, it could well be, mate. It could well be. If he, but then again, by the looks of it, depends if he's going to get a stop and hold. It's normally around about 40 seconds, so we'll keep an eye on that one. But PVG out in front. Ralph Cullen and closing, trying to close him down. Has brought the lap times down a little bit, which is always good for Ralph, but he's got to see how he can do for the rest of them. That's going to be the problem for mm -hmm. Ralph Cullen. And PVG there, you can see Cullen was quick on lap one. PVG was flying on lap two, did the fastest lap of the race on 207. But I've got a funny feeling this might be Cullen and lap free here yeah we were just praising Craig Jones catching the back of uh, the Sid and Sansom fight unfortunately he's gone it all wrong and dropped to 13th in the order was that all on his own though because otherwise if it that's Griffiths behind him oh that's a hard one we we'll have to have a look on the board up to here on the JBB chopper no there was contact Unsettled the car. Um, Griffiths just give Craig Jones a little bit of a nudge. Miles Owens also Ooh, looks like. <laughs> yeah, Miles Owens in the sim race Sweden also off again. Unfortunately for Miles, it's not been the greatest evening for Miles Owens. And that is the result of that one. But Pete Newman, Dan Hunt resuming this battle. Yeah, and this is good for Ralph Cullinan because he was starting to worry about Peter Newman catching him. And now Newman has got uh, Dan Hunt going up the inside of him into roller coaster. There we go. So uh, now Dan Hunt slots himself into third, uh, getting revenge on Pete Newman after he made that move right at the end at the same place in race one. But I think Pete Newman isn't done with this battle yet. So the more these guys get stuck behind Ralph Cullen and the better it is for Peter Van Gool. Yeah, it is. PVG up the front there. Leading the way, Ralph Cullinan is in behind. He's got Dan Hunt Newman. This is Hefford. He's trying to clear Wilson. These guys back together as well. Hansford, Littler, and Owens are all in the pits. It looked like Andy Littler has jumped to the pits. It looks like he may have had a little Ooh, bit of an issue, an issue. And then Ralph Cullinan, Dan Hunt, and PVG with Pete Newman nestling out 2v2 two two here. As they're going through lap four with eight minutes to go. Yeah, and crucially, Newman not quite able to overcome Ralph Cullinan through the horseshoe then and into NASCAR. So now Dan Hunt has got PVG essentially to himself here, but <laughs> there's not a whole lot of margin between the top five here. And there's a, mate, there's a nine second gap between Siddons and Wilson. So that shows how important it is to stay out of trouble in these races as Sanson takes an awful lot of curb there and yeah. somehow keeps it pointing in the right direction. Colin Sanson moving after Pete Newman as best he possibly can. He's using the drive. We're going to sit here and watch the action. We're going to jump onto and Pete Newman. You can see it now as well. 
Dan Hunt, PBG. Hunt's just gone through. How long is it going to last for? Well, Cullinan's trying to come through now. Is it going through South Bend? Coming into the oak tree, the right hand of Dan Hunt, PBG. Not this time. PBG is going to be in the perfect position to get him down on the straight. Yeah, and you can feel the frustration on board here with Pete Newman because he couldn't get the exit he wanted because Ralph Cullinan had the car right on the apex there and is sort of essentially holding him up. You can see Hunt and Van Gogh just escaping down the road here. So Newman needs to make this move now if he wants to win this one. Yeah, Newman's alongside. You can see PBG's alongside Hunt as they're coming in now. In through 14, the roller coaster left hand, and now they've got the right. Newman's cut the nose off. I can tell you that much of Ralph Cullen, and Cullen's there, gone now. So it is Newman in B in front of Cullinan. Hunt's going to try and get through the hog pen. He's got to look at getting the run through PVG again. You can see with Colin Sansom is not almost too far away either. This am lead out here. Some great battles taking place up front. We've got Jamie Wilson having a right old little ding dong with Steve Hefford. They're just side by. Oh! oh. As I say round that. again. As and Dan Hunt retakes the lead. Yeah, as I say that, Hefford there was their contact for Wilson. It, ooh, Hefford's unsettled the cut. Mm. I'm not really sure on that. Looked a little bit like he just got a little bit too far on the curb because there was a little bit of margin to Wilson behind, wasn't there? Wilson was certainly close. A little bit on the... Ah, oh, there was contact. Slight little bit. Slight little Ooh. bit. That's um, Steve Everett in there as well. Mick Barry and Craig Jones. Oh dear, when we see these two on the racetrack, there's normally fireworks. Newman up to second. Uh, so it's well. Hunt and Newman in the lead again. It's a rerun of race one, isn't it, James? Hunt, Newman, Van Gogh. It is. PVG, Pete Newman and Dan Hunt with Ralph Cullinan in there as well. As these guys are continually Samson scrapping has made a mistake up, because he's shouting it through. Him. Five minutes remaining of oh, this battles here as well. Ralph Cullen and PVG, Pete Newman off down that run, down the start finish straight with five minutes to go. Yeah, sorry to cut across you, James, but I just noticed that Colin Sanson, who was leading class, was right behind Cullen and has clearly made a mistake or hit trouble. And uh, now Fiona Siddons re-leads, uh, has got back into the lead of the AM class to the tune of four seconds then. So we've got our top four group. Again, and it's three of the same people in it. Hunt, Newman, Van Gogh, and a Cullinan. Still just about keeping in the slipstream here and keeping uh, Tom Griffiths at bay. But look at Pete Newman all over the back of Dan Hunt as he tries to get revenge once more. No, makes a mistake on the exit of roller coaster there. Uh, Pete Newman's just got it a little bit wrong there. Went in a little bit too hot. PBG with Ralph Cullen and now chasing down Dan Hunt. Dan's got a second up the road. It is his escape. Now, this is it. They've give, given him a lifeline. Can he hold it? 1.1. He's got some straightaways. He's got about two laps to go. Three temps between Cullen and PBG. How is this one going to work? Well, we're going to find out as they're going over the line now. Four minutes on the clock. Dan's Hunt's got that lucky. He's got that gap. He's been handed that gap now. He's just got to make the most of it, Ed. He does, uh, so it's a golden opportunity to get two in a row for, oh, well, no, no, not two in a row, to get revenge for race one, essentially, because it was Peter Newman who did uh, take victory that time. But yeah, Van Gogh is sort of starting to defend from Cullinan now more than uh, attacking uh, Dan Hunt in front of him, so that's even more good news. So I expect we're just going to see a big battle for second in these final three minutes between PVG, Cullinan and, uh, and Newman, with uh, Tom Griffiths not too far behind either. Yeah, we've got Craig Jones having a right little ding-dong with Mick Barry. This is for the final podium spot in the AMS. They haven't come together just yet. They normally do come together at some points when these two are on the circuit. So we'll keep an eye just for a minute. You can see the league gap's not changed at the moment. Hunt, PBG, Cullen and Ann Newman are as they were. I'm expecting it to get closer as they're coming down the straight. It looks like Ooh. there was an incident up the front oh, all of them together Dan Hunt went off track and then he come back on so Dan Hunt having a little bit of an issue here from the lead of the race oh unforced error as well let's see does he just go too deep 
into the oak tree. Yes, he does. And off track he goes. So bitter, bitter disappointment for Dan Hunt. He's thrown that one away and down to fifth he goes because Tom Griffiths has got him as well. Look at the lead. Yeah, Newman here got the over the run over PBG down the straight. He's made it through. Pete Newman round the left. Now they go dropping down the hill. It's going to be coming round the right hand up for Hogpen on that run again. Jones can't get Barry. He's trying desperately. And as I say, they normally end up mm, coming to contact to these two. So hopefully these two will keep it clean, but back up front, PVG, Newman, Cullinan, Hunt and Griffiths, any one of these four on the final lap of the race. Any one of these five, really, the way things are going, but Newman trying to hold on, trying to make it two wins in a row here at VIR and at PVG. Uh, after just getting on the podium in the first race, as uh, was leading earlier on past Cullinan, has had Newman and Hunt get past him and now wants some revenge. But Ralph Cullinan, uh, he desperately wants to try and uh, keep the pressure on PVG, see if he can force an error. And that means PVG can't quite have Peter Newman to himself. In fact, goes a little bit wide for the snake. Cullinan is going to go up the inside of him. Yeah, Cullinan's going to get through now. It's all about what Ralph's going to do. Griffiths has got hold of Hunt here. Two more. You can see him in the background. It looks like PBG might actually have a slowdown because he's just lost two places. Dan Hunt and Tom Griffiths. So, unfortunately, there for PBG. Miles Owens, bye-bye championship. Mate, come on. We're early days. You've still got this. Uh, uh, yeah. There's still two more races to go. We're only on round five, buddy. Come on. You, you've got this. You know what I mean? There's plenty of time remaining. PVG, Dan Hunt. Hunt's on the inside. Nearly. But can Cullen and get Newman, do we think, going over the line or coming down this long straight? He's quite a far way back. Yeah, you you wouldn't think he's quite got the pace here to do it, but we've, we've been proven wrong. Uh, it only takes one mistake then for this race to fall away from Pete Newman and into the clutches of Ralph Cullinan. But I think Newman he saw exactly what Dan Hunt did. He's not going to repeat that same mistake then. Just 15 seconds left to go in this race then. So I think we might have to cross the line to do another lap, but it's going to be tight here, James. Yeah, I think we're going to be too far out um, on this one. We've got, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, right. we've got a hog pen to go. Then we've got the start finish line. It was Barney waving frantically here. So we are going to get this done over this one. Pete Newman's going to come over the line. He's going to take two for two here. Great start to the evening for Pete Newman. Two for two. He is your winner. Cullinan holds on. PVG gets Dan Hunt. What about Siddons? Well, she takes the arm victory over over Colin Sampson, Craig Jones, McBarry. Nope, it did not happen. What happened to Craig Jones on near the final lap here of the race as he was having a right old little ding dong with Mick Barry? Where is Mick Barry? There is Mick. Something's obviously gone on between. No, Craig, that was all on your own. Unfortunately for Craig there as well. And I'd say they normally end up having to come in together, but that was all on Craig Jones, all on his own on that one. Yeah, just pushing a little bit too far over the curb on the outside there, and uh, it bit him, which is uh, really, really unfortunate for Craig there. He was having a good recovery up to that point, but it does give Mick Barry the final slot on the AM podium. It definitely does. So Alan Toon, Martin Sampson, Charles Kellerman, and Craig Jones just waiting for these guys to come over the line. As you can see, Craig, who's in Steve Hansford's down in 14. Craig Jones is there. So we'll just see where we're at. Kellerman's over the line. It is Jones and Hansford. We've just got to wait for Hansford to come over the line. We will see that number Isn't 20. He's a lap down. He's a lap down, yeah. But he obviously passed the checkered flag before the leaders went over the line. So therefore, he's, ah, I get he gets to carry on being a lap down rather than if he slowed down and went two laps down, he would be able to finish. If you see what I mean. Uh, it does make sense, yeah. So he's in that sort of awkward position because yeah. there's Craig drifting yeah. over the line. Yeah, he's, he gets to now go basically and finish the lap. So uh, this is Steve Hansford uh, coming over the line as the cameras decided, no, it's not Steve Hansford. There he is. And we'll bring you up the results from race number two, as we'll be switching over sessions very, very shortly. 
But here are the final results. Pete Newman is your winner with Ralph Cullinan in second and Tom Griffiths in third. PBG in fourth and Dan Hunt in fifth. Fiona Siddons takes the arm win. Well done to her with Colin Sampson in second and Jamie Wilson in eighth. Mick Barry wraps up the arm podium with Sir Alan Toon, Martin Sampson, Charles Kellerman, Quaid Jones, Steve Hansford, Steve Hefford, Andy Littler and Miles Owens down in 17th. Right, guys, as always, we'll be right back after this short break. And we will see you on the other side.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back again here. Thank you so much for joining us. We are into practice before we go into race number three. Top 12 reverse for race number four. Random grid for race number five. Craig Jones, stop moaning. That's all I can say. Get good, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> stop blaming. with that simple, James. Yeah. Stop blaming the car. Stop blaming everything. Just get good. You know what I mean? Try better. You know? That's that's all, all I have to say to you, Craig. I'm afraid. Here, read your comments. And yes, to be honest, it was done in my uh, new air fryer. My wife brought it in to me. So thank you very much to my lovely good lady uh, there as well. Um, right. Two great races. Two dominated by Pete Newman. Well, not dominated, but two by victories for Pete Newman. Can he make it a four out of four, do we think? Uh, it's going to be tricky. Because again, we don't know what this grid, the next couple of grids exactly are going to look like. But uh, uh, potentially, if uh, he plays his cards right, because it, it always seems to come down to the slipstream and sort of strategically just sort of staying out of trouble in the early stages and then making a way through, as it tends to be the way in these sort of chaotic sprints with the order so mixed up. But uh, but yeah, I think um, I think he can do it. It just depends uh, if uh, the likes of Dan Hunt and uh, PVG can get it together. They might be able to hold him off. Uh, or indeed, uh, Ralph Cullinan, who of course was runner-up, wasn't wasn't too far off him actually, only about seven tenths behind as they cross the line in race two. As we look here at uh, Fiona Siddons, class winner of the uh, AM class, of course, last time out after miss. I think there was a mistake, wasn't there? Yeah. From uh, Colin Sansom, which uh, dropped him behind, and Sansom finished just behind her, uh, her as a uh, going across the line. Then, so uh, that was a that was a good vi that was a good consolidation of the sort of. Uh, top 11 reverse grid pole that uh, she inherited essentially so let's see if uh lightning can strike twice or if uh, colin sampson's gonna breeze through again well we're gonna find out very very shortly the, don't forget it's a complete random reverse for race number three so none of us knows who's gonna be where well yeah, i can tell you one thing at the moment here as well we've got steve hefford on pole alongside dan hunt with andy littler and steve hansford then pete newman jamie wilson fiona siddons charles kellerman colin sanson tom griffiths mick Bauer, Barry and Miles Owens, your top 12. On from there, Martin Sampson, Rafe Cullen and, uh, Ralph Cullen and PVG, Craig Jones and Sal and Toon. So they've got on pace, I think, this time. Hence why Mr. Jones is at the back. Yeah, PVG uh, is also right at the back as well. So uh, that's not good for him. No, but here we go. Lights are going to be coming on now. Steve Hefford is on. Oh, steady, Steve. Don't want to be moving there, buddy. As he gets away, and it's green, green, green for race number three. And here comes Andy Littler trying to make that outside line work at the moment. Steve Hansford, Pete Newman's in there as well. But it is Dan Hunt, Steve Hefford, Hefford with a whole shot going into turn number one here, Ed, and a great start from him. Yeah, exactly. So he did exactly what he needed to do, but ominously pete newman goes around the outside of andy littler into nascar there so a good start for peter newman then but a little bit wide for hefford then so so crucial for dan hunt not to trip up passing hefford for the lead here because hefford is going to be a little bit cagey as he uh, probably wasn't expecting to be leading uh, this race. No, a little bit early on, I'm sure. But you see, look at the cars behind. They're too wide further back. PVG's in there with Ralph Cullinan. Probably not the smartest idea to battle this early on. You've got Jamie Wilson, Tom Griffiths also scrapping it out as they're coming down through South Bend here for the, fight for the first time on in race three, Ed. A lot going on already. Yeah, another good move for Miles Owens, who gets uh, battle is battling Kellyman. Oh, in fact, going a little bit off track there as well as they go towards Oak Tree. Uh, but look at this. There's uh, Griffiths just holding off Jamie Wilson, and Wilson trying to go around the outside then. In fact, does get a better run, shadowing Fiona Siddons then as they go down the back straight. Yeah, Pete Newman here with Dan Hunt and uh, Steve Hefford battling Definitely. it out. Yeah, I don't know if he will. I don't think early on, unless he's going to, he, he's got, he's grown some big pair of steelies and he's going from straight at the beginning. I don't think Newman will make that move for at least, I don't know, unless he really has to be caught by Sanson behind. I can give that probably at least another five to six minutes before Newman thinks about making a move. 
Yeah, but uh, Dan Hunt, crucial move for him to clear Steve Hefford there going into roller coaster because now he's got to make hay while the twilight of the sunri sunset in the background is, is happening. Uh, I was trying to make hay while the sun rises, but I completely messed that up there because the time of day is wrong. But uh, yeah, Pete Newman go now. Go the other way. Go the other way, mate. Yes, exactly. As we see uh, Griffiths and Littler battling behind. Oh dear, it's going to get very, very mixed up here into turn one, then into the horseshoe. And it's the 87 of Wilson that holds Griffiths at bay. Yeah, it is. But even Miles Owens all the way back down here with uh, PVG still continuing to fight. Ralph Cullinan's in there. Siddons is off the oh, side. Siddons. Yep, Siddons is off the side of the circuit. Not entirely sure what happened to her. That was with Andy Littler by the looks of things. Is Littler going to come out white? Nope, Siddons just got it all more hardware, I think, on there than anything else. So she's now got back up and running there. Didn't look like an accident. Didn't look like an incident. Just looked like some form of hardware fail. Yeah, potentially a screen freeze or something like that. So that's really, really unlucky for Fiona. But look at this PVG. Oh, my goodness. So less than a car's whip there. They go through the snake and uh, PVG. Uh, desperately trying to find a way past Kellyman and uh, not finding it. And Miles Owens keeping very, very close company behind as well. Yeah, PVG trying to move forward. It's unprecedented because he has been so rapid this evening. Like, he has been so quick that I would have thought he would have been further up, right? But he, he, obviously with race three, it's just completely random. He's now got to go full hell to lever to try and move his way forward, which puts him under added pressure, doesn't it? It puts him through to them things that he's got to make moves that he wouldn't necessarily more than, uh, normally make. Oh, look at this free wide between Kellyman, Cullen and... And is that Van Gool trying to get involved as well? <laughs> so absolutely mixed up as they go into roller coaster. But crucially up front, uh, Newman has not been able to clear Steve Hefford. I think he briefly got ahead and Hefford slips through his way back through. Yeah, Ralph Cullen and there, banging, door banging. I think that was PBG oh. off. It is. Now Jones has made his way back up into the pack. He's going for it as well. So Craig Jones trying to make his way through here in that number 29. Pick a side, mate. Pick side. You probably got to be better pushing Martin Sampson to give you a little bit of room. He's going to clear Andy Littler. Is he going to get Sampson on the inside? Is not. Sampson shuts the door. We've got Miles Owens going side by side with Ralph Cullinan. We've got Dan Hunt escaping up the front from Steve Heffern and Pete Newman. There's still a lot going on. Absolutely. It's hard to know where to look, but I'm surprised Newman wasn't able to clear Hefford uh, particularly quickly there. And I think Dan Hunt is not going to make the same mistake that he did made from the lead in race two, is he? He's just going to lap consistently and clear off and uh, make sure that uh, Pete Newman doesn't get him this time. But yeah, Samson, meanwhile, has set fast to slap the race. He's starting to close mm. on the three leaders here. Quite a surprise. He's done really well. Right? Over last season, towards the back end of last season, and this season, his pace has been really, really good. So it isn't a surprise. What happens with this is they get the drivers in, they get the pro and am splits, and then all of a sudden, it's hard to differentiate between the pro and ams because they are all as quick as each other. You know, and then the ams learn off the pros and it's that's why it's got that great community feel about it. So, you know, it, I'm, no, no, I'm not surprised that Sanson has sat there. He has got quicker and quicker and quicker as the season's gone on. However, Jamie Wilson is trying to make Tom Griffiths go quicker, quicker, quicker. <laughs> He's almost pushing him along, isn't he? Yeah. Down the back straight here as Owens and Cullinan continue to squabble and bicker behind. But yeah, Tom Griffiths is uh, probably grateful that Jamie Wilson hasn't just decided to nip to the inside and breeze past him there because uh, with the slipstream, he just looks so much quicker and he's able to hang with uh, Tom Griffiths through a uh, hog pen as they go through to start another lap then. Uh, lap four beginning now. And uh, Dan Hunt only leads Hefford by six tenths of a second. I'm surprised at that. I thought Dan would uh, have checked out by now. Yeah. Um, oh, Steve's lost that place to Pete Newman. 
I'm wondering how much of that slowdown did New Heffern have to take off before he got there? Because that was a weird, you know, normally go and hit the brakes and slow the car down. But I can tell you what, these four are not slowing down. Miles Owens is in front of Martin Sampson, Ralph Cullinan and Andy Littler. It's optical green. Results clothing, work guard by result, all chasing down the sim race. Oh, Miles. Oh, he's, he's not he's Miles, pushing. that's Kellyman, I think, going wide. Yeah, Miles Owens is pushing that car, pushing and pushing and pushing. I'll tell you what, if he hits that grass, he is going to be in deep trouble. He won't be able to stop that. We've seen it a lot of times. It's hard, yeah. yeah, there was a, well, there was another word, but you, you and I both know we're not going to use that one. Um, yeah. So, but, uh, yeah. I but, yeah, got to keep it PG. Got to keep it PG. Down on Pete no, Newman, no, scrap it out the front. Seven minutes to go. These guys have been attached to each other, and, I'm, and I wouldn't... We say he's going to get three out of three. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be. It's going to take something special from Dan Hunt to just hold him at bay here. As meanwhile, we see a three-way fight for fourth between Samson, Griffiths, and Wilson. So, Jamie Wilson and Tom Griffiths have worked together to close in Samson, haven't they? Mm. I think that was why Wilson was pushing him along in the end. Because there was no need for him to overtake him. He, he tries to obviously just m m get him to where he lets go. It's like bump drafted in NASCAR. Two goes quicker than one if you're down a straight and you're locked into each other. Which, I know it sounds weird, but that's how it works. And it looked like... From Wilson's point of view, he was doing that to Griffiths. However, Pete Newman is probably not going to do that to Dan Hunt. Yes, and uh, Griffiths was able to slipstream past Samson, but Wilson still stuck behind. Oh, and crashing into the back of him. Oh, dear. What happened here? Oh, uh, Samson got it all wrong. Oh, oh I can guarantee Wilson was sat in that car praying that he was going to be able to make that through. And he just did it. He can see it now. He's got all the way. He's got all the way. Sansa's just kept coming. And unfortunately, both cars ended up there and it's into the pits. But Newman and Hunt, five minutes to go. It's going to be hard. I, I don't want to say Newman's going to get him again, but I've kind of got distinct feelings of deja vu. <laughs> Same here. But the upshot of that crash, and a big shame, by the way, uh, for Colin Sampson to once again make a mistake while leading the AM class. Uh, but this actually puts Miles Owens into the top five, of course. So after so much disappointment, great to see Miles having a much better run here. Yeah, Miles Owens did well for himself. Keeping this going, he's doing a great job. So fair play to Miles Owens. Still in fifth. It's all right. It'll be all right. He will recover from the first two and get some good results in the third and fourth. As Dan Hunt still holding on from Newman. Heffern's now pushing Newman as well. Ooh, there could be a lot going on here, Ed. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Uh, Pete, New Pete Newman's really got to hope that Heffer doesn't just make a do-or-die move in his final couple of laps here because he could really be the fly in the ointment. And look at this, Pete Newman is starting to get a bit desperate. He's going, pulling to the inside as they go into roller coaster to try and make the move on Dan Hunt. But Hunt has got the inside as they exit. Yeah, Hunt's got that inside line. Is he going to be able to take it further down, Hunt, as they drop in now through into Hog Pen? Steve Heffern's not giving up. It's going to be one and one more. It has been all evening. That's what we're going to see. Dan Hunt's on the right hand side. It's getting a little bit foggy out there, to be fair. A little bit um, hazy. Newman, oh, Pete, you rascal. Slot straight back in. Oh, dearie me. Why? Three wide, down into turn one. Surely Newman's going to back out. Ooh, Hefford breaks as deep as he dares and just about avoids going onto the grass there. But it's Dan Hunt that holds onto the lead so they're in exactly the same position as before. But Hefford now up the inside of Newman into NASCAR. Uh, Hefford now in front of Newman for how long? Give Newman room to come back on. Into NASCAR they go. Round through left hook. Through 5A, 5B. Heffer did make it through. Is he going to be able to hold him long enough, though, for the next two laps? Yeah, very compliant from Pete Newman there, wasn't he? He left plenty of room for Steve Heffer. Did not want to get taken out. But the upshot, while all these three have been battling, 
Tom Griffiths has been closing on them slowly but surely. So once more, third race in a row, we're going to see four cars battling for the lead in a pack all to themselves. Yeah. This is what we get here. This is never any short of epic racing. Miles Owens is in there with Martin Sampson and Ralph Cullinan. Andy Littler further down is having a little bit of a ding-dong with Steve Hansford. These guys not leaving each other alone. Hansford's looking up the inside as they're on their one round through South Bend very, very shortly. And at the moment, they are as they are. Yeah, and Hefford has lost out to Newman then on the run down the straight. So once more, they change positions and Hefford now just starting to push Newman on because he's noticed Dan Hunt starting to pull a small gap on them. And he's seen uh, Tom Griffiths starting to catch them behind. So maybe they will start to work together a little bit more here. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they will. Can't see it happening, but maybe it will. Uh, Martin Sampson has cleared Miles Owens, and that was coming down in through the roller coaster section. So now it's the turn of the Irishman. Don't forget, top 12 reverse. So at the moment, Steve Hansford will be on pole position as long as he stays where he is. Uh, Dan Hunt, the final lap of the race. Deja vu all over again. <laughs> Yep, and uh, once more, it's Pete Newman all over the back of him as they go through the horseshoe. Uh, but Steve Heaven looking to spoil the party, and Tom Griffiths just that little bit further back as we see there's that battle between Owens and Sampson continuing on in the background, and it's Sampson holding on to fifth at the moment. But Dan Hunt, or oh, how dearly he would love to win at least one of these races here, and this is probably going to be his best chance so far, James. Yeah, it is. Looks like Martin Sampson's off the side of the circuit, though. So all of that hard work that he's just done to get up past Miles Owens has gone out the window, unfortunately. So for Miles Owens, it, it's, it's um, for Martin Sampson, it's a no-go. But here we go again. Newman, Hunt, and Hefford. Sure, we've seen this before. <laughs> and look at this. Hefford trying to get right to the inside then and just having to back out there as they exit the snake. And you see Tom Griffiths so close yet so far. And look at Newman getting defensive, if anything, as they go into Oak Tree. Yeah, Craig Jones has just gone off. He's just gone off. He's just lost three places as Mr. Jones. And, of course, he was up at the front of the Ams. We're going to see this before. Over the curb he goes onto the grass. And, unfortunately, that's going to allow everybody to go through. And he's lost a couple of positions. He's got to go and go once more. But here we go. Final run. Newman on the right. Hunt on the left. Hefford wants to get involved as well. Not quite sure there's going to be the run. Oh, they're leaning. They're leaning. Newman's going to have it, I think. He's got to go over now. He's got to try and take his nose off again. Down into hog pen they go. This is going to be a run to the line. That line is a long run. It's a long oh. run. I think Dan it's Hunt. Run, Dan. Yeah, yeah, he's just got it wrong. Dan Hunt just got it wrong. It is going to be Pete Newman. It is going to be Newman, but it is it going to be Hefford. It is going to be Hefford. Hunt's going to lose. Not only did he not get the win, he finished in third. Oh, Dan Hunt. What's going on with Craig Jones down here? He's having a right little ding dong at the moment, is Mr. Jones. But Steve, Pete Newman again. Three out of three so far. Yeah, important move just done by Craig Jones. That puts him into that important top 11 position, doesn't it? Ahead of the next race. Yeah, so Craig Jones will be on pole. We just hope and pray that he finds his way as he's come around. He's just snatched 10th on the line with Andy Littler. Go, Mr. Jones. Still didn't take the AM victory, but you did manage to get 10th place. Fair play to you, dear sir. Fiona Siddons comes over the line. Here comes Sir Alan Toon. And then we've got to wait for Mick Barry, who is, again, another lap driver, but he just got past that lap. Um, before or got past over the start finish line before the leaders, so there we go. Great little battles again, and, and it's epic racing. Race four now, race four can be a different entity altogether here, Red, and and, and it can go a little bit Pete Tong. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. But uh, by the way, shout out to Fiona Siddons because despite whatever their technical issue she suffered, them caused her to go straight on. She was lapping two seconds a lap faster than the rest of the Amfield. So good on her not to give up there.
Yeah, Pete Newman is your winner with Steve Hefford in second and Dan Hunt in third. Then we've got Tom Griffiths, Miles Owens, Ralph Cullen and Martin Sampson and PVG rounding out the pros. Charles Kellerman gets the arm win. Craig Jones snatched second place away from Andy Littler right near the end there. And he's taken second in the arms with Andy Littler getting in that third. Then Steve Hansford, Fiona Sidden, Sir Alan Toon, Colin Sanson, Mick Barry and Jamie Wilson, the last one into the result. So we go into a brief little five-minute warm-up again here. And I think you could safely say it's been a very interesting evening of racing, I think. A very profitable evening of racing for Pete Newman, of course. <laughs> Not been headed yet, but each of those races was has been a thriller, really, hasn't it? Uh, with loads of uh, interlopers in the mix with uh, <laughs> with uh, Newman and Hunt's uh, private battles, essentially. So, uh yeah, we'll, we'll be. It's going to be fascinating to see uh, uh, how this uh, race four, uh, like you say, the the in step into the unknown, as it were, as we're starting to get really dark in the background here, with the uh, sun going down uh, over the horizon. But yeah, and Kellyman, shout out to him. I think that's uh, is that two class wins so far that he's uh, secured. It is. He got the, the class win in race one. Uh, Miles Owens, I finished the race. Yes, you did this. Uh, well done, you. Proud of you. Now go and do it again for race number four. And um, Fiona Siddons had blackout on screen. We did figure it was a technical, as then all of a sudden you come back on. But apparently, according to the statistician, Ed here up in the booth, you were lapping two seconds quicker than the other Rams around you. So fair play for you for on your little comeback there. Uh, nice, nice try. But uh, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Unfortunately, technical issues are something that we do contend with here in the world of um, virtual racing, shall we say, Ed? Yeah, the others were lapping in the 112s, and Fiona was consistently sort of dipping into the uh, well, two twelves, I should say. And Fiona was in the in the in the 210s essentially, although the leaders were in the 208s, 209s. So she she wasn't too far off the the overall leader's pace. But of course, she would have wouldn't have been battling anyone. She pretty much after the uh, screen freeze, they had the track to herself. Yeah, but still stayed in because some people exactly want to cut out and just gone. Yeah, I've gone. So um... oh dear, uh, for that one, I've just had a. Message. Um, you okay? I've just had a message from Mr. Jones. I, I'm not even going to get involved with that one, Craig. The the, oh, yeah. the wives can. You clear that one with the yeah, ten foot pole. Uh, yeah, the wives can carry on talking to each other for as long as they like. Um, so I'm not. So you go and tell your wife to get off the phone to my wife and see how that goes down. <laughs> <laughs> see if you're surviving I'm after. Glad, I'm not in a marital situation in this commentary box. But <laughs> oh, mate, don't. When you get the two wives together, they had about an hour's conversation last night about hair. Um, toners and low lights and highlights and number 26s and 53s or... Um, and all sorts of random stuff. So, uh, I didn't know haircuts went up to those numbers. No, it's the toner <laughs> colour, apparently, mate. Oh, it, right. It's, um, yeah, there's. I oh, don't. I've been married they to, got to you. I, I've been married <laughs> to a hairdresser for nearly 18 years, and, um, yeah. I've learned these things with low lights, highlights, and all the other lights in the process. So, um, yeah. There we go. Just to let you all know. Indie lights I'm familiar with uh, indie lights. <laughs> yeah, the lights are going the light bulb, right? Let's be real. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Lights out the way we go. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> lights out the way we go, yeah. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go racing. Um, but, yeah, no, um, unfortunately, you do learn these things, you see, especially when she cuts your hair. But it's not one of them where you get, what would you like, dear? It's sit in the chair and I'll do what I want. So I just sit in the chair. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There we go. Right, here we go. We're 35 seconds left to warm up before we go into that final race for... Can Newman make it four out of four? Depending on where he ends up on this grid, it's well, entirely it's top 11, possible. isn't he? So he's going to be in 11th. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I think if he keeps it clean at the start, I think uh, I wouldn't bet against him. But uh, if it gets very, very chaotic and he gets caught in that, then I think it could be a slightly less straightforward prospect. I think this is probably going to be the best chance for Dan Hunt to get his own back here. Well, Hunt's going to be in, in ninth. But I said that before, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Hunt's going to be in ninth. 
Hunt's, uh, no, Hunt's going to be in 8th. So Newman will be in 11th. Hefford will be in 10th. Hunt will be in 9th. Hmm. Well, let's find out how this one is going to work out. There we go. Steve Hansford is on pole. Andy Littler in second. Craig Jones in third. Charles Kellerman in fourth. It's an all am at front two rows. PBG, Martin Sampson, Ralph Cullen, and Miles Owens, Tom Griffiths, Dan Hunt, Steve Hefford, and then Pete Newman in, in 12th. Then Fiona Siddons, Sir Alan Toon, Colin Sampson, Mick Barry, and Jamie Wilson. So Steve Hanford's going to lead us away. The lights are off. We are going to be up and running. And it is green, green, green for race number four here of UK Sim Racers MX5. Round five from VIR. Steve Hansford's broken away. PVG's coming in like a... Oh, my dearie me. Free wide further back at one point there, Ed. Told you. Gets a little bit spicy in race four. <laughs> Indeed it does with that top 12 being reversed. But there we go, PVG going round the outside of Andy Littler into NASCAR, or trying to at least. And there, oh, oh coming to oh. grief as Craig Jones goes up to second and, oh, won the Momo cars. Just going full on into the wall there. Steve Everett. Steve oh, Everett. Everett. Yeah, apart from having PVG going off the side of the circuit, Everett went, oh, my dearie me, you're way too fast. Way too fast. Missed everything there. I think Heffern just had a little bit of a, a brain moment. Fiona Siddons. Oh, Pete, hold it. Oh, my God, blimey. But Steve Hans for that in front. Ralph Cullen and the great judge in top three. Yeah, no matter more. Oh, and more chaos. Oh, please don't tell me that's Mars Owens going round at the snake. It is, unfortunately, the 74. <laughs> Exiting the wrong way and deep into the grass. Oh dear, Miles. That's just when it's not your day, it's just not your day. Charles Kellerman side by side with Pete Newman. Dan Hunt nestled in there. Tom Griffiths is trying to make his way through. But look who's already up eight places into fourth oh. is Pete Newman. That's about two people spinning on the exit of Oak Tree there. I think one of them was Hefford again. But yes, Pete Newman has already gained eight places in this race. Dan Hutt right behind has gained five as well. And Ralph Cullinan also gaining five. And oh dear, oh, yeah, Hefford and uh, Fiona Siddons about to make contact once more. Oh! oh so there's nobody spun in front of them. Oh! And they, oh, just that was Andy Littler's in Ding Dong in front of that. Oh, he's come back on. Oh, my, there's another one. That's, Sans That's Samson, isn't it? Yeah, Samson's snatch gone back the other way. He's hit Littler, PVG's in there, Barry's in there, Siddons is in there, Hefford's in there, Ooh. and good old Sir Alan Toon, who we haven't really spoken much about, escaped through it all. So great job from him and Steve Hansford, Ralph Cullinan going side by side. Cullinan's going to take the lead. Is the Irishman going to get the win? What has happened to Pete Newman and how the good blimey oh. did he end up? Ralph's got it wrong. What is going on? Yeah, oh, there was a little bit of contact there, but I think Hansford and uh, Cullinan going as deep as they could into the into the horseshoe, and Cullinan coming off by far the worst. But yes, as you say, Pete Newman, oh, despite all that, whoa! Dan Hunt went off track, come back on track, and that was Hansford out the lead at that moment in time. He's gone over the curve, and then he's just bumped into whoa. him. Hansford was very slow on the going through the apex of NASCAR there and then just got hit in the rear and it's led to complete carnage behind. But look who is in second place. He's surely not going to make it four out of four. Well, Tom Griffiths is going to try and stop him. Uh, Craig Jones uh, has got back up into third. It's so good to see Craig has somehow navigated the chaos, has kept Dan Hunt behind him at the present moment. But how long can Craig keep the number seven car on the outside here desperately trying to defend this samson now getting involved in this battle but yes pete newman all oh, shadowing tom griffiths and looking for a move as hunt goes oh. around the outside of craig jones into third position yeah jones didn't really have much of a response for there we go nestling behind him Get the overspeed and then go try and go round him again. Griffiths and Newman, they're side by side as they come over this fog laced hill here in VIR. Down through roller coaster we go. Newman has only gone and got the lead again here. Pete Newman out in front. Is he going to make it four out of four? Well, it's looking like a little bit of a shoe in at the moment. 
Yeah, he just made so much progress in these early laps, doesn't he? Despite, uh, there was one moment where he just got a little bit pushed wide, I think. But he's quickly recovered as we see Kellyman being passed by Cullinan and Sampson there in the back. I think Kellyman in real trouble then because he, as he continues to fall down the order. But yes, the only problem now is Newman's going to be slipstreamed uh, down the road here as we see, look at Cullen and trying to defend from Wilson and Kellyman. Yeah, foggy and icy, says Summer Farm Estates, which is Fiona Siddons. Tom Cairns, is it raining or something? No, it's not. It's just, unfortunately, one of them days where it's a little bit moist in the air and it's a little bit damp on the circuit. Partly cloudy, 23 degrees, and it is being at half past eight in the evening. So, you know, we've got to take that into consideration when your weather temps come along. But Pete Newman out in front here. Ralph Cullen and nestled in behind Craig Jones. Oh, man. If fireworks don't happen between the Englishman and the Irishman here, I'd be very surprised. Are they going to make it through cleanly? Craig gives Ralph a bucket load of room. Ralph says thank you very much, and he goes through. And now Ralph's setting on his way after Martin Sampson. But Tom Griffiths, keep it Pete Newman honest, at least. Yeah, sounded like the beginning of a joke there. <laughs> Englishman and Irishman go into the snake together. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> what I, I, you dread to think where that could end up, couldn't you, if you start making up Englishman and Irishman jokes on the fly? Uh, of course. <laughs> a Scotsman in the race as well. But, <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't quite see uh, Fiona Siddons retire from the race. That is a shame to lose our uh, race to uh, Am winner. But look at this. Griffiths, is, uh, he's kept well in the slipstream of a... Uh, Newman so Newman's not been able to break away and all of this is allowing Hunt to slowly claw them in as well as Sampson and Cullen and going side by side into roller coaster oh and Cullen's going to get the inside on the exit here yeah Cullen's going to try and have the inside line going through 15 and 16 if Sampson can hang it out around the out here live the inside for the hog pen he's not Craig Jones is going to be under attack from Jamie Wilson in the background but at the moment Ralph Cullen and and uh, Martin Sampson, we've got Tom Griffiths and Pete Newman. This is what's going on up front. Griffiths is... Oh, oh. gee whiz. Do you know why? I actually thought he was aiming to take him out then. That was so I bizarre. Thought, I thought Tom was going to go in the wall there for a second. But look, he's got the inside forcing Newman to go the long, the scenic route, essentially. And that is going to compromise his exit into NASCAR and Dan Hunt watches with keen keen interest as Cullinan continues to hold up a train of cars for fourth position and Sampson has got the inside into fourth place yeah Sampson has got it there as well so he's now going to be trying to set after Dan Hunt honestly I don't think they're going to get there this second group for these guys for Craig Jones he just needs to hold on to the am lead if he can Charles Kellerman is not far behind him Griffiths is there Hunt is in that Hunt's just past Griffiths as they're coming down through the S's through seven, eight, nine now. Before they go round South Bend, Hunt's gone both. But we've seen this before. It is just flat out deja vu for the last three races. <laughs> there we go. Impressive, impressive move from Dan Hunt. Had to really get the big boy pants on to uh, not just use the momentum to pass uh, Griffiths, but also clear uh, Newman as well. But Newman, he will have the confidence. He's seen Dan Hunt lead him before and he's got through seven minutes Ooh. to go i would not bet bet against peter newman getting back in front by the time this is over samson by the way he was three seconds behind he's slowly closing in the gap to tom griffiths uh, so i don't think we can discount him either is newman already going for the lead once more yeah griffiths has taken that third spot he settled in behind these two as newman is showing dan hunt what he's done to him over the last two races in that corner that very corner he has done the same thing ralph cullinan's off oh ralph what did you do what did you do mr cullinan Oh, oh, that's is that Wilson behind? I believe it is. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, but it's Samson. I think. Oh, that he was trying to go Ooh. around the outside, and unfortunately, not quite enough space. Yeah, but I am quite surprised he gave that up there. As Dan Hunt with Tom Griffith, Griffiths, Pete Newman. Newman's on the inside. Griffiths is on the outside. Sampson and Wilson are coming. Jones and Kellerman is trying to come up and get behind them. Not 
not doing very well for Charles Callum, and he's got to try and get hold of Craig Jones for the Am win. Miles Owens and Steve Effort are having a right little ding dong down here in 12th and 13th. These guys are incredibly quick and probably shouldn't be down this low, but they've been caught up in their own little incidents and accidents this evening, and they are at the moment down here. But Miles Owens, Steve Effort going right at it, further down, chasing down Mick Barry. Wilson's just cleared Sampson, and Griffiths is still setting after Newman and Hunt. Yeah, Wilson and Samson fighting like rats in a sack at the moment, and it's costing them time to the leaders. If I think they would be better served working together, really. And again, Samson repasses Wilson, what feels like the 50th time down this, down through the snake, essentially. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be, I think, Samson that holds it as Wilson just has to back out there. I can tell you now that seven times um, over the last <laughs> half lap uh, that they've gone and overtaken each other. Seven times. Oh, they've had <laughs> yes, after you, to you, to me. It's like the Chuckle Brothers here. As Dan Hunt, Pete Newman, and Tom Griffiths are going at it again. Samson, Wilson, Jones, and Kellerman now. These four could be tying it out. This is the arm leading that as well, mind you. They've got to be careful, though. They don't want to be taking them themselves out, as Newman has done to Dan Hunt what he's done over every single race this evening in that very corner through the roller coaster. It just doesn't look like Dan Hunt can hook that up like Newman can. Yeah, and Newman, as he's gone on, he's become better and better at defending that lead once he gets into it. He knows if he loses it, he knows exactly where to place the car to slipstream his way back through. And luckily for Newman, Dan Hunt has got Tom Griffiths to deal with now at this present moment. But they're getting double slipstreams then as they come into Horseshoe. And again, Pete Newman just hugs the inside like it's his favorite uh, granny, I guess. And now onto the apex they go. And uh, Dan Hunt is able to hold off uh, Tom Griffiths as well. Yeah, but Colin Sanson, can he hold off PBG and how long for? Charles Kellerman is trying to get onto the back of Jones. Jones is trying to get onto the back of Wilson. And Wilson's trying to get onto the back end of Sampson. So it's literally about two and a half, 2.9 seconds between Martin Sampson and now Ralph Cullinan, who's joined the party at the back here. So this little group could have quite a little effect on themselves coming into the final lap, of course, which we will be on this time around. So Pete Newman, Dan Hunt, Tom Griffiths, does Newman want to allow Hunt through again to do what he's been doing for the last three races to do it on the fourth one? Uh, possibly. It depends how many laps there are left to go. I think we are, you're right, on the uh, penultimate lap because once they uh, cross the line, there's not going to be enough time to do another one. So, yeah, he's got to judge this well a little bit wide from uh, Pete Newman, but he still gets a decent run out as we see Cullinan and Kellerman fighting away over seventh. Looks like the Irishman's finally got back through after his earlier off. But look at this. Dan Hunt just gaining ground inexorably down this straight. Tom Griffiths can only watch as a spectator, essentially, as the two Titans, Hunt and Newman, once again do battle into roller coaster. Yep, Samson and Wilson still swapping. They're just coming over in the background, as well as Jones, Cullinan and Kellerman. Cullen and Kellerman just cannot leave each other alone as Kellerman gets it all a little bit wrong. That's going to give Jones a little bit of a breather. Samson and Wilson, Miles Owens and Steve Heffern again. They're still having a right little ding dong down in now 12th and 11th place. But it is Newman's open up six temps going on to the final lap. Does it really mean a lot when we've got this such draft heavy trap for these little MX-5s? Yeah, you notice Hunt uh, almost tried to back off into roller coaster, like he was almost like he was uh, going to stick behind and set up uh, Pete Newman for the following lap, but he didn't get a great exit, and that has meant he's now having to worry a little bit more about Tom Griffiths at the present moment. So this is interesting. Tom Dan Hunt, we've seen him in this position before, where he looked like he was going to challenge for the lead, and then ended up losing it to wasn't it Hefford, wasn't it, in, the, mm. <laughs> in one of the earlier races who stole second from him off the line. So there's a danger of history repeating itself here. Very much so, because Tom Griffiths looks like he's been waiting for this moment. Well, we're going to see how this moment goes 
And whether or not Newman's going to make it four out of four. We haven't got long left. Wilson and Sampson, they've jeopardized each other. The gap's still back now, back to 6.7. But do you think they care as they've been having a right little ding-dong? Hefford and Owens, right? One, two, three, four, five six times they've overtaken each other over the last lap of course so six times they've had a little bit of a ding dong but i can tell you now this is newman and he's only got to survive this straight really ed because it doesn't look like anybody can get past him in them final few corners yeah he's got three tenths to play with here but uh, hunt and griffith's gonna be gaining all the time and the problem is griffith's if he gets a good enough run here He's not going to give Dan Hunt any favours whatsoever as Hunt tries to pull to the inside late on. He's going to have to break late to pull this one off. But Newman holds his line, blocks Dan Hunt out, and he's going to hold on to the lead here. It's all about whether Griffiths can get through. Yeah, now we're into the whole pet in the right hand. Uh, it looks like Newman may have just wrapped up the only man by what I can ever remember, taking four out of four over the last two and a half years of racing. It looks like you've got to keep going, Pete. The line's a long way down, buddy. It's a long way down. Oh, Pete. Oh, my gee, my god, blimey governor. What, what, that was a, that's a long way down. You can see Samson's had to go at it. What's happening with Jones and Kellerman? They're going to be going side by side. This is for the Amley. Jones did manage to keep it. Colin Samson wrapped up behind him. Right, Steve Evan, Miles Owens. Again, they're doing all this weaving and the line's halfway down there. Pete Newman physically could have picked, got picked there because of how far the line was. <laughs> yeah, almost like he forgot where the finish line was. But yeah, was it 78 thousandths of a second there that uh, Newman won that one by? Maybe he knew he had enough in hand, but that looked more like, I agree, a mistake uh, to celebrate slightly too early. Or was he just showbating? I don't know. But, uh, but, but either way, frust ultimate frustration for Dan Hunt there. Yeah, it was. And, and it, uh, the line is very far down at VIR. This is probably one of the only race courses that I know that would have has that finishing line so far down normally they're literally as you come around the last corner 50 yards up the road at some tracks i've got bar first it's literally as you go around the last corner the same with the hockenheim ring as well they're right near each other so for this one to be far down it's probably not easy for the drivers to remember but here we go with the final results pete newman is your winner with dan hunt in second and tom griffiths in third martin sampson fourth jamie wilson and ralph cullinan are your top six they're then we've got Craig Jones, your Am Victor, with Charles Kellerman and Colin Sampson. Pete Van Gogh, Miles Owen, Steve Hefford, Steve Hansford, Mick Barry, Sir Alan Toon, Andy Littler, and Fiona Siddons. I believe we have got Craig in the booth here, who I'm sure is going to come in celebrating his class of victory, his first one of the evening. That is his third podium out of four. And as Meatloaf said, Two out of four, uh, two out of three ain't bad, but let's bring him in. Mr. Jones, welcome in, sir. Hello. You know I'm not one to brag, so, you know, let's just, uh, let's just not mention it. <laughs> uh, all right. We won't mention it then. How was it out there for you? Uh, it was really good. I got three podiums and I got a... Um, yeah, oh, got, for uh, God's sake. Class, I got a class win as well. So, uh, yeah, it, was, it went really well. Thank you. Not mine to brag. Let's not mention it. And that's the first thing he says. Race four looked quite interesting, though. Very foggy. It was very foggy. It was uh, very door banging. It was, uh, yeah, just kind of just trying to hold on. Uh, you know, I... I not getting on with this car i don't particularly like it anymore um but it, it's well i say that there was an element tonight where i thought no i'm just starting to get the hang of it again uh and get that feeling back in the car so yeah it was a, a typical uh, race for lots of chaos lots of uh adrenaline going through me uh so yeah i enjoyed it but it was uh yeah a close call at times yeah it definitely was and i, and I think for you it's going to be an interesting one are we going to see you on track next week Absolutely, I'll be there. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, Mr. Jones, thank you so much for joining us. I dare ask this question, but I will anyway. Is there anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? 
Uh, just you guys in the booth do a fantastic job. Well, one of you do. Um, and, uh, you, you know. Harsh, okay. Yeah, I know, Craig. It's Ed, Ed's first Ed, night. You're not supposed to make fun of him already. Ed, you've done a fantastic job tonight. Well done. Um, so, yeah, thank you to you. And, uh, yeah, thank you to my wonderful teammates as well. Awesome stuff. Well, Craig, thanks so much there, buddy. Have a good one. And I'm sure I'll talk to you shortly. You will. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Right, next up in the booth is Fiona Simmons. Bit of a rough race four. Class win in race two, though. So let's talk about the positives before we go into the negatives. Fiona, welcome in. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. And just to point out, uh, I got the class win before Craig. <laughs> you did. You did. But, you know, he, he doesn't see that, mate. It's, uh, uh, he looks in the mirror and the only man he sees is him completely himself. It's all about Craig. So don't you worry about it. But tough night for you um, after race two, though. Bit of a rough race three and four. Uh, race three was good. Race four uh, got caught up in somebody else's incident. Just tagged Andy's car as I got squeeze through uh, then got to the top of the straight and somebody hit me up the back and it just ploughed me straight into the barrier and killed the car yeah but overall though it was four great races wasn't it I think that was the thing there was close action all the way through as there normally is here it was yeah and I was surprised to stop in what it's seventh overall in race three when I won the Race or was it race two? Race two. Oh, race two. Race two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was surprised to stop in the top seven in that one. It was good. Yeah, it definitely was. Well, Fiona, thank you so much for joining us. Anyone you want to shout out before we let you go? Yeah, same as Craig. You guys for doing the stream. Ed, you like Craig said, you did a good job for your first night with us, and everybody in result. Awesome stuff. Well, right, right, yeah. I, it won't last, Ed. Don't <laughs> take these one compliments this week because I guarantee Craig's probably not going to be as nice as that next week. But Fiona, thank you so much for joining us and uh, I hope you have a good one and hope you have a good week. Yeah, thank you. Hope you did lot do as well. Take care. Right, Ed, that's going to bring it up. How was it for your first evening here on the UK Sim Racers MX-5s? I was just about to say, next week, by next week, you'll probably have someone better alongside you in the country. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, lots of action. I've, I've, that was really entertaining. Uh, uh, I was going to say pair of races, but uh, I was I'm forgetting what the word for four. Four races. There we go. Really entertaining four races. Uh, uh, and uh, of course, it's the same man winning all of them. Uh, Pete Newman really, really showing his class uh, with... Uh, I, I, I think uh, you can't really fault him in any of those uh, encounters here no. at, at VIR. He just uh, absolutely nailed them, uh, had the measure of the likes of Dan Hunt. And Dan Hunt, to be fair, was probably his most consistent challenger across the, this whole event. Uh, but he always had that little bit in hand exactly when he needed it, uh, even with the show betting a little bit at the end. But to be fair, with all this fog around, I'm surprised he could see anything, let alone the finish line. So... So, yeah, and growing some great action further down from from the field. Uh, the MX-5's really, really putting on a fantastic show for us, slipstreaming each other, battling one another, a couple of collisions, but most, for the most part, fairly clean. Yeah, it definitely was. But that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here this evening as well. We've got more action coming up. There's actually action taking place right now on the JBB YouTube channel as the JBB NASCAR Super Series comes down to its final race of the season. And it looks like it's going to come down to a final green-white checker here because the battle for the, the uh, championship is between Tim Perry and you and Stitchbury. And they are in fourth and sixth at the moment. More coming up, of course. Prospect E Racing League F1 is on as well from Abu Dhabi. And then later on, we've got the BSC returning from Texas Motor Speedway. But for now, guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for everybody that has joined us. I've been James Barvey. I've been alongside Edward Hunter here this evening. And as always, take care. Have a great week. And you never know, we might see you on the track sometime. Good night. <laughs>